cards, my love. Are you ready for chapter two? I am. I want to find out if she was like really going to attack or say hi. I'm confused. Chapter two. The stranger didn't twirl around or scream in fear. Instead, it flew to the top of a fence post in one motion as easily as if it were a bird and sat blinking. Flora did a stop, slid to a stop, and put her front feet up on the post. Did I scare you? Terrified, the furry white creature gave itself another leg, lick. I've got rock hard hooves and a mouth full of sharp teeth. Flora opened her mouth to show how sharp they were. You better be careful. Such terrible weapons. I'm lucky I'm still alive. My name is Flora and I am a pig, said Flora. I'm in charge around here and she stopped because the animal had turned its head to lick its back. Flora wasn't sure it was listening. And I like your fur because it's all white like mine. Flora didn't know why she had said this to an animal that might be an enemy. Are you a dog? My name is Luna, and I am most certainly not a dog. I am a cat, and I like your spirit, <laughs> she said. We could be sisters, said Flora. Luna gazed at Flora for a moment. We're not sisters, she went back to her licking. Flora walked to the other side of the post to get a different view. Why do you keep doing that? Doing what? Licking yourself. It's how I keep clean. Flora stuck out her tongue and gave her shoulder a lick. It tickled her tongue in a way that didn't feel very good, and besides, it tasted funny. I don't lick myself, Flora announced, and she rubbed her tongue on the top of her mouth to get rid of the tickly feeling. I can tell, said Luna, and that is why we're not sisters. A soft breeze made Luna's, Luna's fur move like a wave. Can I feel your fur? Flora asked. Luna hopped down. Now, that's a request a cat can never refuse. She rubbed her white fur along Flora's side and her tail slipped under Flora's neck. Look at, there's a picture at that spot. Isn't that sweet? I think they both look happy there. Flora had never felt anything so soft, not even mother's underbelly or Alfred's silky ears. Luna walked over to the fence and turned. I hope you don't mind if I come back to visit someday, even if we're not visit sisters. I'll try to remember to stay away from those rock hard hooves of yours. Flora's heart lurched. You're going already? Luna looked surprised. I'm a cat. I come and go as I please. She slid between the boards and disappeared. A squeal slipped out. Flora couldn't help it. She wasn't proud of such a piggy noise, but she wanted so much to be able to come and go as she pleased. And her best chance for adventure of the whole day, the whole week, and even the whole month was leaving. Hey, relax. One of Luna's eyes appeared in the crack. Flora made her voice behave. Take me with you. You're not a cat. Remember, you're a pig. I wander around and see things, and you, you stay in this pig pen, and you do pig stuff. Why? Oh, wait, but I don't want to do pig stuff, Flora whispered. I want to wander around. Why? Luna poked her head back inside the pen. I'm curious, said Flora. Hmm. Luna rubbed the side of her head against a board. Curious, that's good quality. It shows you have spirit. Though some think being curious means you're looking for trouble. I'll go do some wandering. Then I'll come back and tell you what I find. Stay out of trouble. She drew her head back through the crack. But I don't want to stay out of trouble, Flora called. I want something to happen around here. There was a silence and then Luna's head poked through the fence once more. Oh, it will. You won't have to look for trouble. It will find you. And when that happens... Luna disappeared, but her voice continued. Keep up that great spirit and make a plan because nine lives is just a state of mind. What plan? Flora raced back to the top of the manure pile and watched until Luna's tail, her tall waving tail, rounded the corner of the barn. Flora sighed. With a heart born for adventure and hoofs stuck in the pen, Flora couldn't help thinking that trouble might be a good thing. 
That's the end of chapter two. But it's, so these are, chapters are short, so maybe I'll keep reading. Chapter three. After breakfast the next day, Flora sat on top of the manure pile while her lazy brothers snored away again. Too bad for them. They couldn't behave or they, they wouldn't be making any new friends or learning new things or getting ready for trouble. She stood up on her hind legs and waved her front hooves in the air. Luna would probably think that looked pretty spirited if only she were here to watch. Luna, Luna. Flora put all her thoughts into wishing the cat back and then there she was slipping through the junk heap, her beautiful white flag of a tail following behind. Flora bundled down the manure pile, manure pile to meet her. Hi, Luna. Hi, Flora. Luna hopped on a fence post. Watch this. Flora spun around in a dizzying circle. She dashed to the top of the manure pile, did a two-legged walk, then walked back down, barely managing to stop herself before banging her snout into a fence. Wow, said Luna. How's that for spirit? Flora was breathing hard. I never knew p pigs could have so much. Luna sounded as if she meant it. You almost looked like a horse galloping up that manure pile. Like Nessie? Flora put her small hooves up on the post and looked over at the large hooves peeking out from underneath the horse stall. Nessie used to be the fastest thing on the farm, but she's older now and her front legs bother her. Don't get on her bad side because she can still kick when she gets grouchy. She hates being cooped up for too long. That was exactly how Flora felt. She waited to hear more about grouchy Nessie. But Luna lifted her left hind foot and began licking between her toes. I've been getting ready for trouble, said Flora. Luna stopped licking, but didn't put her foot back where it was supposed to go. She looked at Flora as if she didn't understand. Flora tried again. You know, like you said, it always finds you. Oh, yeah, Luna sat, sat up straight. The trouble with trouble is it's hard a hard thing to prepare for. Speaking of trouble, this farm would be a great place to wander around if it weren't crawling with dogs. Maybe you've heard them. Flora nodded enthusiastically. What do you know about dogs? I know they howl just to hear themselves howl. I know that they get off their leash and they always do. Then they look out. Well, then you better look out because no one is safe. Flora felt a little thrill go through her. She wouldn't be, she would be happy to teach a dog a lesson. Why is this farm crawling with dogs? Training, said Luna. The dogs on this farm are being trained for expeditions, which are the same things as adventures. Adventures? Flora could hardly believe her ears. How could anyone be so lucky? It starts when they're puppies about your age. First, they get used to the lines and ropes and harnesses. Then comes the real work. Trained for adventure. Flora couldn't get over it. They pull loads that get heavier and heavier, Luna said. Dogs might be annoying, but on this farm, they are the hardest working animals of all. Why do they have to pull so... Flora stopped. Luna had slipped down to the ground almost without moving a muscle. Now she was staring at the top of Flora's head in the strangest way. Flora shook her head in case she had a bit of manure stuck to one of her ears. But Luna didn't stir except for her tail, which stuck straight out behind her and trembled at the tip. Then she lowered herself into a crouch and her eyes got very wide. Flora realized they weren't fixed on her at all, but on something behind her. Flora turned slowly. The dirt beside the fence was moving. No, wait, it wasn't dirt. Flora peered closer. It was the same color as dirt, but hairy. Then Flora saw a long, naked tail. Look out, it's a rat. Ooh, is that a good place to stop? A rat. Ooh, I wonder what's going to happen next. We'll find out next time I read. I love you.